Hi guys, happy Friday. Welcome to my channel. Uh, for those of you that are new, my name is Orly. This is the DIY designer. I do killer DIY fashion, sometimes home decor, release videos every Friday and uh, bonus ones on Sundays every once in a while. And today's video is totally different. There is no fancy DIY, there's no crystals and rhinestones and sparkles, there's no glue. It's a really great one. This is all about no sew alteration hacks. These are things that I've been doing my whole life as a teenager started doing these and I still do them now even though I know how to sew. Sometimes it's because I want it to be a temporary alteration or sometimes it's because I'm just lazy <laughs> and I don't feel like it or I'm short on time. This is stuff that you can do today to make sure that the piece you're wearing fits perfectly with the outfit you're wearing and the style you want to convey. So I'm really stoked you know how much this channel means to me. You know how much you guys mean to me. The fact that you guys tune in for these videos and have supported growing this channel to where it is now just means the world to me. And the only reason that I actually have the ability to do that now is because I'm in an amazing position where I get sponsors. And today's sponsor is Skillshare. You guys know I love Skillshare. If you've been watching my videos, you know how obsessed I am with this magical little platform. But if you're new and you don't know about Skillshare, basically it is an online community where like, I don't know, millions of creatives come together to sort of deepen a knowledge and something that they know a little about but they want to become an expert in or they want to learn something brand new. I mean they have everything from classes in illustration, graphic design, photography, creative writing, animation, film and video like editing and shooting, marketing info, business, finance. I mean the list goes on and on. If there's something that you're interested in you are going to find it on Skillshare. The most recent one that I've been doing and I'm so excited is about art journaling. I journal like journal, journal, just write. And I'm a super visual person and I work within a creative visual field. And so to me, the idea of figuring out how to start an art journal was so exciting. So I took a couple of different courses. One was just on art journaling, looking at how I could use like backdrops and photos and words and all these different things to create a really cool visual journal that I think would really help me like accomplish what I want to accomplish in my life and, and all the goals that I have right now. But what I also did is I took some courses on just like fashion sketching, watercolor and how to kind of use an original inspo and kind of almost knock off the the structure of it and then develop from there. I hope that you guys will take advantage. This is such a cool offer. I do have a link below and it will give you guys a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Everything, like all of the courses, all of the things, take as many as you can. You're going to fall in love with it. And once that's over for Skillshare Premium, it's under $10 a month. So under $10 a month, you can take as many courses as you want all the time. Even my kids sit on my lap and watch and do them with me. It's just such a cool platform. Click that link down below and take advantage. And then let's get into this video because man, it's such a good one. I'm just going to do everything here in my room. I'm basically going to like show you before, show you the alteration and show you the after. It's going to be super fun and I hope it's super useful. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. And um, yeah, Mwah. let's get into it. We are going to start off with hemming your jeans. Now I'm talking about actually maintaining that great bubble hem that is at the bottom of your jeans. So let's say that's about where I want to hem it. What you're going to do is actually cuff your jeans. Everything that I'm holding there is what we're going to get rid of. And then we're going to fold it down. Now this is exactly how you do it when you're actually sewing it. It's just instead of sewing, we are going to be using safety pins. Obviously, if you know how to sew, then when you're watching this, you'll know where to stitch it. But if you don't know how to sew or you want this to be temporary, maybe it looks best cuffed with certain shoes, but you want them to be able to be full length the rest of the time, take your safety pins and you want to put it right along the edge, like as close to the edge of the hem as possible. Then when you flip it down, the hem will be perfectly maintained. You can see there, it's kind of bubbly, right? We do need to iron it. That's super important, whether you're sewing it or using safety pins. Just press it so that it all becomes really smooth and flat and it all looks like one piece. And you can see it looks perfect. Having that bubble hem, that original hem, really makes it look like this is the length the jeans always were. So it's a great way to get away with hemming your jeans temporarily when you want them this length, and then simply undo your safety pins and have them back to your regular length if you wanna do that. Now, this is another version of the same idea. This is what you can do if you have stretchy, uh, like jegging type jeans. Now let's say that's the length you want them. Well, cuffing is a particular look and that might not work with whatever outfit you're doing. So another way to do that is grab the fabric and like fold it underneath. You see, I'm just tucking it underneath. I want to go right up to the original hem. Again, maintaining the original bubble hem is absolutely the most important thing here. You don't want to fold it under and get rid of it. So you fold it under just like that. There's my excess. I fold it over. It lines up perfectly. There I am. I'm the same length as my cuff jean, except I just 
don't have the cuff. It looks like it's perfectly crisp and allows me to have that length. And when I want to fold it down, I can fold it down. Really, really easy. Two ways to do it. Now, this is something I do when I have like a wide shoulder. This one was actually sewn, but I'm going to show you how to do it with safety pins. Now, this originally had like a wide shoulder and it made the sleeves make my body look really broad. I didn't think it was flattering. I didn't like the way they looked. So I sort of created this pleat and sewed it down. I'm going to show you how to do it with this shirt. Now, this is a shirt I found at the thrift store. Super cute, Michael Kors, but it was a 2X, which is a little big on me. So what I thought is this sleeve, see how it's like a drop shoulder? Sometimes that looks cool, but on this shirt, I just thought it it just made the whole thing look too big. Like I just couldn't get away with wearing it in a way that was like slouchy. I tried tucking it in and it was still too large. I tried tying it in the front, but again, because it was so big, it was like hanging down. So we're gonna do a few alterations to this one. First one we're gonna do is the shoulder. Now there's my shoulder seam, it's inside out, right? You can see how wide it is. I'm gonna create one giant pleat. Now on the right side of the fabric, where this pleat gathers is actually underneath the collar. So you're not even gonna see it. So I'm grabbing my safety pin and I'm pinning through both layers of fabric, making sure that I only come out on the right side of my fabric for like the tiniest bit and go right back in, basically like I'm tacking it down. So I'm safety pinning it to hold it into place. Now take a look at the difference there. You can see that's what I've turned it into. It's maybe two inches wide, the shoulder, versus that, which is about four inches wide. So when you're doing the second shoulder, you wanna start folding it and then kind of grab the first one, line them up and make sure that they're even so that obviously your right and left are even. Make sure that the shoulder seam is on top of each other so that it doesn't look like a little step. You want it to be really even. And again, barely come out on the right side of the fabric so that you're not gonna see that safety pin at all. Now for the back, there's all this extra volume. This shirt happens to have a seam down the side, but that doesn't really matter. If yours doesn't, don't worry about it. You're gonna gather two sections, however much fabric you wanna take out of the back, and you're gonna use a pretty brooch, something that's meant to be seen. My shirt now is facing right side out, so this is actually being seen from the outside. By broaching together those two pieces, it takes out a lot of volume. Now here's the shoulder. You can see there's the little gather that I did and the collar covers it. That sort of folded down collar covers it. It pulled my shoulder in and look how much less volume I have in the body. I've got this pretty brooch in the back. Again, you're gonna use a brooch that works with whatever shirt you are wearing or dress. I do this a lot with dresses. And now when I tie it, again, I've just taken out a lot of extra volume. It looks really pretty in the back. It lays more flattering through the rest of my body. I have more shape in my waist. You can choose to do the brooch like right under the bust. If you have a larger bust and you wanna make sure that your waist is tapered. And again, you can see everything just falls better because I don't have quite as much volume and it's all done with pins. I just wanna show you one other quick version. This is a big white dress. It was like a shirt dress that's just really oversized. And so I actually used my big brooch and did it while it was on me. It allows you to feel for what fits better and you can see it created a nice straight, simple front with a really pretty gathered focal point in the back. So again, you wanna use a pretty brooch so that it looks intentional, but from the front, you have a much better fit. Now this is one of my favorite. This is a great dress, but it's just like bulky. The body is a little bit too large and the shoulders are too wide. Now the shoulders, the reason that's an issue is that it has that little gathered sleeve, like a mini puff sleeve. When that's further out, I just feel like it makes you look like a linebacker. Like it's not correct. So we're going to start with the waist. Now this is a dress that has a like two little belt loops and the belt is obviously meant to go around the front. Instead of tying it around the front, we are going to go through the loops and pull them towards each other. Basically tying the two loops together in the back and getting rid of all of that volume. Look at how nice and smooth and soft it is in the front and how pretty it is in the back. It looks almost like, I don't know, like a bustle in the back. It's got this really pretty asymmetric detail. Now here's number two. I'm gonna unbutton the back because I think that like the neck hole is too wide, which is part of the reason that the shoulders are too wide. So I'm gonna overlap it until it feels like it's the right fit. Now, when you're really doing this, you'd actually you probably use two pins. You would do one on the right and one on the left. That way it's laying fully flat. But now you can see from the front, not only does my neck hole get a little bit more narrow, which I think is more flattering, but it pulls the shoulders in. 
the shoulders are pulled in, the waist is pulled in, and it's all done with that tie in the back that's just taking the two belt loops that already exist on my dress and pull them towards each other and the overlap. I need to add that little pin, but look at this dress fits me so much better now and it's fully custom because I can adjust the waist as much as I want. Now here's another version and I think this is easier to understand because I filmed the last one like halfway through. Here's the belt, right? It's a dress with two belt loops and a matching belt. The way it's supposed to go is tied in the front like this. Tie it and there you go. But it's like kind of frumpy. It doesn't give me much shape. Yes, I'm wearing it over jeans. So instead, take your belt just like that and pull back. See how it acts as this like, you just like tighten it, tighten it as much as you want. It looks pretty in the back. It creates a beautiful shape in the front that's fully custom to your body because you wear it as tight as you want, but that's it. You can do this with jackets, draped vests, anything. Now here's a top that I love, but it's way too open. It like falls off the shoulders. The front is gaping. You're gonna see a bra, which I don't like. So step one, we're gonna take a tiny safety pin, overlap it exactly where we would want it and put the pin in place. Again, you wanna barely pick up any fabric so that you don't see it on the outside. From the outside, you see nothing. It looks like I sewed in a little hook and eye, but I didn't. All I did was take a tiny safety pin, go through the back side, connecting both pieces. It's perfectly in place. It's not gonna open and you cannot see it. This is amazing hack for not needing to add snaps or buttons or double stick or anything like that. Now, number two, again, I think the shoulders on this are a little wide. Yes, I don't know why I still have the tag on this. Really can't explain it. I'm going to put a safety pin in the back and I'm gonna put that little amount that I'm safety pinning inside so that it doesn't stick out. But look, it also brings in my shoulders. It brings in the neckline. It raises the neckline. So all in all now, I've created this really beautiful V-neck that I can actually wear with a bra and like normally without feeling like I'm gonna fall out. Super simple, safety pins are the best. Okay, here is a dress, a uh, skirt, excuse me. This is basically like a tight little skirt knee length. I wanna show you how you can shorten it, really creating three skirts out of this. You're going to fold it up and fold it back down. Now, normally when I do this, I'm trying not to show myself on camera here, but basically I'm gonna tuck underneath the fabric. So what I'm doing is folding my skirt in half but it's underneath, it's inside. See, I'm grabbing the hem and I'm kind of raising it up. I can have it fully in half. So literally the hem of my skirt is up at my waistband or I can lower it a little bit depending on how long I want the skirt to be. The bonus for something like this is the skirt's now double strength. So it feels really good on. See, there's the hem. I've just folded it completely in half. You can do this by tucking things into your underwear, or in this case, it's tight enough that I literally just fold it in half inside out from the outside. It looks nice and clean and crisp. And from the inside, it's nice and taut. Now, I also wanna show you how to do a ruched skirt or ruched dress without sewing. Take the side seam and grab your safety pin. You're gonna go in and grab like a half an inch. Go back out, half an inch. Go back in, half an inch. I'm basically gathering my fabric and the key here is to gather it as much as you possibly can fit on the safety pin. Like really jam it in there. If the safety pin is loose at all, you're gonna see the metal of the safety pin from the right side of the fabric. That's why you wanna make it super tight. You're gonna add that on, close it, and there you go. You can see it's got a nice ruched detail. Now, if you want it to be longer, which I did, you're just gonna grab a second, second safety pin, start where you left off and do the exact same thing. Now, when you flip it open, we've got a double ruched detail. Sorry about the lint, I don't know what's going on here. And there you go, you can see it's got this great ruched side. Now this would work awesome on a bodycon dress, on like a long tank dress, just to create a little shape around the waist. It's really flattering, it can disguise a lower section of your belly if it doesn't feel fully flat, you feel a little insecure, that's a great way of doing it. Now here's just another version where you can take a long dress and turn it into a mini temporarily. Again, we're doing the same thing, we're grabbing it, pulling up and pulling down, making sure that the entire thing is tucked in. Now, again, normally I do this on my own, but I'm like trying not to like flash you guys. So it's taking me longer, but right now it comes up to there. That's where the hem of my skirt is all the way up there. Again, creating a tight, strong, almost like Spanx feel for my dress. This gives me a full two-in-one dress without cutting my dress and ruining it permanently. Now here's another thing, this is like not a cute look. The sweater is too big, it does not work with the proportions of the skirt. It's a great sweater, I wear it with jeans and boots all the time, but in this sense, it's not great. So I'm gonna show you how to crop it. All you gotta do is grab the hem of your sweater, this could be a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, anything, grab the hem, pull it upside down, and tuck it into the underwire of your bra. The bra needs to be tight, obviously, so that it's gonna hold, but tuck it in and boom, 
We have a cropped sweater that's got a really cool like high low. Of course, you could tuck the back in as well if you want it to be cropped all the way around. This is something that I do all the time. It allows me to customize the length of all of the items in my closet. You can do the same thing with a skirt. Pull a skirt all the way up and tuck it into your bra. It could go from knee length to mini in a second. So use your bra as an anchor, then just pull it out and it's back to normal. Again, you're not ruining your clothing. Here's another version. This is a sweater dress. I've got it folded in and tucked into my bra in the front and the back. Now it's this great little sweater that comes right to the edge of my jeans, just like I want it. It's not tucked in and bulky in my jeans. It just looks like it was always that way. When I pull it out, adjust my bra back up and I've got my dress back. So again, anything you want, t-shirt, sweatshirt, dress, anything can be tucked into your bra. Here's another quick version. I love this t-shirt. I wear it loose all the time, but sometimes I don't wanna tuck it in or I don't wanna wear it loose. So again, all I'm gonna do is tuck it into my bra. I can tuck it way high if I want it to be super cropped or just a little bit if I want it like that. Now here's another thing. Having cuff sleeves on like a big t-shirt like this is always a really cute look, but they never stay, which is super annoying. I don't like sewing them. That's the way I like them to look, but they never stay like that. I refold them 30 times throughout the day. And sewing them looks kind of cheesy, like when you can see that it's been sewn. So this is a really great way to do it. Basically, you wanna fold your shirt in half and just get to like the shoulder. You basically are gonna grab your safety pin and you're gonna go from the back side in through, again, kind of like barely picking up that outer layer of fabric so that you don't see it. Constantly double check to make sure. You can see it there a little bit. That's actually not great. You wanna keep going until you do not see it at all, which is totally possible as you can see. Keep adjusting it. So here, fold, fold again. Now this is how I want my shirt to be. So now I'm gonna access that top half, see? That's the place that I want a safety pin. Sure, you could do the whole thing, but you really don't need to. That's the part that you wanna keep. That's the part that's gonna unravel on you. So keep going, barely picking up the fabric. As you can see there, you cannot see it at all. Double check, once it's good, close the safety pin and you're done. Now, as you see, I've got the fold and if I tug on it, it's not going to come undone. It's not gonna stay unraveled. It doesn't look cheesy like I've sewn it. I don't have double stick, which is gonna get really gunky on my shirt. It's just, exactly as I wanted it. Couple of safety pins, three or four on the outer edges and you are good to go. All right guys, this is our last one. I'm gonna show you how to change the length of these sleeves. Now, this is a jacket that I think is super cute, but the sleeves being long is a dead giveaway that it's too large on me. An oversized body, drop shoulder, longer length is really cool. Long sleeves is a dead giveaway. So I'm gonna go ahead and take in those sleeves. Now this is exactly what we did with our jeans. Fold it and cuff it. That amount right there, that's how much shorter it will get. If I want it shorter, I keep going. If I want it shorter, I keep going. So fold it until it reaches the length that you want it to be. Keep going, keep going until it's just about right. Now, if you were sewing it, you would sew all along that edge, just like you would do with your jeans. Then you would cut off the excess. But again, this is temporary. Maybe I don't wanna do that permanently. Maybe I only wanna do this for right now, or maybe I don't know how to sew. Grab your safety pins, run them right along the edge, as close to the edge of the cuff seam as possible. Once you go all the way around, you're gonna fold it down and you'll see that it's a perfect cuff. After that, you're just gonna leave it tucked in. I know it seems like it might be uncomfortable, but it's really not. It just sort of sits in the cuff and feels kind of like a thicker cuff, like when you have your sleeve rolled. That's where it's rolled into and you can see, I mean, it looks great, like it's, <laughs> it's perfect. So look at these two next to each other right? It's really, really great. If I wanted to, I could stitch that down and cut off my excess, but if I didn't, I don't have to. And just so you can see, this jacket here is from my Miu Miu like crystal studded flannel jacket, and I had to take the sleeves in because they were crazy long because it was a men's jacket. So I did exactly what I showed you, but I sewed it. So I folded it. That's all the excess I took out. I didn't cut it off yet because I wanted to show you guys what it looks like, but I will cut it off. You can see that's what it looks like on the inside, the stitch. I'll cut that off and I'll just seam it up with like a little bit of bias tape, but that's it. It's clean finished, it adjusts the length, and you guys, we're done. All right, well, I hope that those were useful to you. Remember, a lot of them are a great place to start if you want to hold it that way to see that it works and then get in there and sew it in place and remove those safety pins or whatever. I mean, some of them are a really great way to learn, sort of simple alteration techniques that once you learn how to sew, you can apply. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, like this video, share it with a friend that you think might find this useful and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Thanks for being here, guys. I love you. I will see you next week. Mwah.